strategy evaluations, country evaluations, thematic evaluations, project evaluations and internal reviews. And the question is, who does what here? Uh, now, when it comes to the strategic evaluations, uh, these are the ones commissioned by our governing body. They are done at the global level. They look at a major outcome, for example, social dialogue, social protection, employment. Uh, they are always done by the central unit. Now, the central unit is a small unit. We only have five professionals. We have then the project evaluations, and they are always done at the country level. Uh, and for those, we have regional evaluation focal points. There are also only five of them. Uh, the reporting takes place for the central evaluation reports, obviously, to the governing body. But also for the project evaluations, we try to have some level of reporting to the governing body. Uh, we have an annual evaluation report that provides an overview of uh, main findings. It also gives a listing of recommendations and follow-up to recommendations. And we do a number of meta-analysis as well to provide some uh, combined findings. Next, please. Now, this is basically a very quick overview of how the, the various uh, evaluations interface with our results-based framework. And as you can see, uh, strategy evaluations always done at the centralized level. Thematic evaluations, they can be centralized or decentralized, but mostly centralized. Country program evaluations, uh, mostly centralized, especially if they are supposed to be independent. And then all the project evaluations are uh, at the decentralized level. And there are quite a few actors involved, and, and oh, I think you better just put them all down there in one go. Uh, <clears throat> It starts basically with the evaluation manager. Now, the evaluation manager is not a professional evaluator. It's an ILO colleague who basically volunteers to participate in the process. It has to be a colleague who is not involved with a specific project that needs to be evaluated. Uh, the person is responsible for preparing terms of reference, uh, helping us to find an external evaluator, stakeholder involvement, circulating draft, and final report. The external consultant, sorry, then the evaluation officer, and uh, my colleague, uh, Prince Solagra there, uh, is actually one of our regional focal points here in Asia and the Pacific. They're responsible to look at the terms of reference, uh, approve the selection of the evaluator to make sure that uh, we have an independent uh, evaluator involved, review draft and final reports, and oversee the evaluation process. And then we have the external evaluation consultant who does the actual evaluation. Uh, and prepares the report. Project managers and support staff are just there to help with the process of providing access to information. And the ILO evaluation unit at the end oversees uh, that ILO policy has been fully uh, complied with. It also supports uh, the various po persons involved in the tasks and approves the final report. So as you can see, with all these actors involved at the end, even though it's a decentralized system, for independent project evaluations, the evaluation unit at the end has to provide approval. Next, please. Now, that has obviously a number of challenges. Um, it's actually because of the quantity of the reports that we have to rely on the decentralized system. We have about 70 to 80 independent project evaluations per year, and uh, we're not able to do that uh, on our own, so the whole system relies on positions embedded in, in, in the regional and department structures. In order to ensure a certain level of quality, we have quite a, a strong emphasis on our guidance, uh, our policy guidance and uh, various uh, guidelines are quite extensive. And uh, another program we have introduced since 2013 is an evaluation manager certification program. Now, this is something that uh, we have invested quite some time in, and I think it is paying off now. Uh, all the colleagues in the ILO that are willing to participate as a volunteer in the evaluation process have to go through this uh, certification process. It's a training course in Turin, uh, but the training course is just one part of the whole process. Uh, they have to then also manage an evaluation under a uh, oversight of a evaluation colleague that is a professional and it's only after that practicum that they get and it illustrates that the differences in quality between the reports of independent evaluations conducted in the regions is minor uh, as you can see the quality is not superior uh, we only actually have 
I would say, satisfactory quality, but you can see the consistency between the regions, uh, the colors representing the regions. Uh, and uh, for me, that also shows that the quality control process works because if you have major differences between the regions, it's likely that your quality control process is, is not functioning too well. Now, you can also see that we have some major issues with the recommendations. Uh, uh, this is something that we're now trying to address. Uh, but the good thing is that it's consistent, and uh, for me, that is a sign that uh, the, the process seems to be working in terms of quality control. Finally, uh, last slide, or second last slide, I think. Uh, now, there is a saying that uh, evaluation systems are obviously goal-oriented and that uh, the system uh, will also have a structure that reflects this. Uh, for those organizations that are very much focused on uh, accountability, they will try to focus on centralized evaluations, and uh, for FAO, that seems to be very much uh, the point. For those that are focused on improving uh, project improvement, uh, they will likely embed evaluation <coughs> in the programming section. And for those that are keen to see uh, more organizational learning, they will try to basically embed it throughout the organization. Now, what we're trying to do in the ILO is to have it all, basically. And uh, I'm not so sure it's always working, but uh, it, it serves the purpose in the sense that we have both organizational learning and accountability. And even though personally I uh, believe that organizational learning is, is the more important aspect, our constituents and donors uh, just are very keen on independent evaluations. For them, accountability is an important part, and we have to find that compromise, and, and that compromise is in this hybrid system. What are some of the disadvantages? Uh, well, let me start with advantages. Uh, I guess uh, we use our staff resources in a rather efficient way. We have only 10 professional evaluation officers, five in headquarters, five in the regions, and the rest are volunteers. And uh, I also think it obviously allows for more uh, organizational learning because these officers uh, participate in the process and are more likely to uh, take recommendations serious. Plus, it also gives colleagues a chance to get into other functions uh, and to learn from their colleagues on, on uh, tasks they would normally not be assigned to. Disadvantages, uh, what we now and then face is that there is a disagreement on who is responsible for what. Uh, at the end of the day, we have accountability in approving the report, but uh, regional directors are quite powerful in, in the whole setup and uh, the process of making them understand that we are accountable and responsible for the final approval is not always easy. There's also a, a high transaction cost in managing this complex hybrid system. Um, but uh, I personally feel that it has an ad advantage over a fully decentralized system. And I think we and ILO will continue with this uh, as part of our effort to, to develop the culture of, of evaluation in the ILO. I think that's uh, it's possibly one more part, Pooh, but uh, that, that's about it. Thank you.